The Crucifixion of Jesus. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Serene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Forgive, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him, which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was about the noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Good morning. It's great uh, to have you share this Good Friday service with us here at uh, Connection Point. We at the Salvation Army uh, believe in, in the truth of the gospel. We believe in the, the word that God has given to us. And so today as we share uh, this powerful story of how Christ went to the cross for all of us, we pray that you would uh, not only uh, receive encouragement, but hope, hope that's everlasting. Uh, so welcome. Good Friday, 2020. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Let's worship the Lord together on this Good Friday.
again, good morning and uh, thank you for uh, sharing with us on this Good Friday uh, service. It's kind of strange as this whole uh, month and, and more has been, and I'm sure in the weeks to come, uh, we, will continue, uh, we will continue to serve in this way, but it's just kind of strange that, uh, you know, during our uh, Easter uh, celebrations uh, from Good Friday on through to Resurrection Sunday, uh, it just seems uh, strange that we're not meeting together. Now, uh, it was kind of fun uh, the other day or yesterday, we had a leadership meeting by Zoom and, and there was lots of laughing and, and going on. We had a, uh, a Zoom uh, phone call on Monday again, just connecting people. And uh, I thank Tom for getting us started on that. And it's been, it's been kind of a, a great time at least to see people uh, and uh, hear people's stories. And, and people's stories aren't ones that are all, you know, kind of down and, oh, you know, poor me and, and pity type parties. But they're, they're stories of how things are, are coming together for them. People talking about that they've never had time with their family like they've had time now. And I can't help but think that that will pay huge dividends down the road for that family and for other families that are experiencing that. For others, it's, it's, uh, there's struggles. There's no question there are struggles. But, but that's what Easter is about. It takes, a, it, it takes a struggle that the world was having called sin, and Christ went to the cross, and, and, and we, we finish at Resurrection Sunday with hope. I know we're not supposed to jump too far ahead of ourselves on a, you know, Easter weekend or those kinds of things. But uh, I sometimes, when having struggles, I, I need to see and sense that there is hope down the road. Uh, it doesn't have to be a lot. There, there could be just little glimmers of hope. And, and those are things that we, we, we need to celebrate and be encouraged by. John 17 and 21, it says this. My prayer for all of them is that they will be one. Just as you and I are one. This is Jesus speaking to the Father. Father, that just as you and me are in me, I am in you. So they will be in us and the world will believe you sent me. He's saying, hey, how we respond in life will determine our push forward in life. Where we go, what we do. Now, this was the last prayer that Jesus prayed before he died, and, and he really dedicated it to the unity of the body of Christ. It was about us coming together, being together. He asked God to make us one because he understood the critical concept, and especially in these days, that the credibility of the gospel would be seen in our ability to have healthy relationships with other people. Now, right now, we, we, can't, uh, uh, we can't just join with those who we like. We have to have credible relationships with people we might not even really know. I, I find it very interesting, even as I drive down the road, people uh, maybe getting exercise, walking their dog or whatever, getting out. But every time you drive by, there's a hand goes up and waves. Not to people I know, but just to people. And what if I just kind of drove down the road in my grumpy self and, and didn't wave back or anything, but all of a sudden people go, hey, there is life. There is life. You see, in the world's eyes, how we treat each other, how we treat our families, how we treat our friends, how we treat the people around us will determine whether they will ever believe in Jesus. Yeah, see, when things aren't going well for Christians, they just get grumpy and they don't even talk to us. I pray that's not, our, that's not the prayer that's being shared by many. Those are not the words. But that they would see in us a glimmer of hope. 
Remember I said I need to see a glimmer of hope to kind of keep moving forward, to keep going on. People, uh, I saw on a... Uh, on an internet, an internet survey on MSN or whatever, and it just asks, uh, in this uh, time of social distancing and staying at home, how do you feel? Uh, sick and tired of it? Doing okay? Uh, it's not too bad. And, and I could have wrote and check marked each and every one because it just kind of depends on the day, but, but when there's a glimmer of hope, I'm okay. I'm okay. Now the cross is a powerful symbol. And we're so grateful that uh, Keith and Linda made this cross for us. Uh, to hang in our church, to put in our church as a reminder of this very day. Good Friday. And the cross is a powerful symbol of Jesus reestablishing a relationship between fallen man and God. It's the, it's the symbol of hope. It's the ultimate symbol of hope. I want to give you a few things that the cross reminds me of. The first thing is, is this. Is that the cross reminds me that we are connected to one another. We're, we're not in life all alone. This is not about me. This is not all about uh, just one person. This is about the fact that because of the cross, we are connected. The Bible says that we are all the same body. Wow. First. Corinthians 12 and 20 and then verse 27 says this, But now there are many members, but one body. Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. We're a part of the body, but, but you know, I'm in. I'm on this team. I'm a part of this, this fellowship. I'm a part of this community. I'm a part of, uh, of the body of Christ. And yes, there may be lots, and I may not know them all, but we are connected. And Scripture says that we are connected intimately. You see, as Christ followers, we, we need to remind ourselves of this before we start attacking other people. Before we start flying off the handle about what's going on. And, and uh, we need to remember that we are linked to each other. We are one body, and we are one body in Christ. Ephesians 2 and 16 says this, As parts of the same body, our anger against each other has disappeared. Wouldn't that be great? Huh? For both of us have been reconciled to God, and so the feud ended at last at the cross. I've seen, you know, you maybe watch more YouTubes or whatever, but I see many, uh, many stories of families being reunited, coming together after many years apart, of many years of not talking, uh, many years of, of, of different things going on. And, and it's like this verse says to me that, that as if we were walking towards the cross and the feud ended there, right there, it ended. And the credibility uh, of the cross rests in the way that we treat one another. The second thing I, I really am reminded about the cross is this, is that the cross gives us the power to forgive one another. The power to forgive one another. I mean, we've been taught by the world to retaliate. Uh, if someone hurts you, then you get them back. Always looking out for yourself. If someone tripped me, I remember in school or as a kid, I would trip someone else. And usually, you know, maybe the bigger guy tripped me. Well, I, got, I was a bigger guy than someone else, and so I went and tripped the little guy. And those, those people down the, 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 the run, the ladder run, got, got picked on again and again and again. 
But the Word of God uh, has a different perspective. Not to retaliate. Ephesians 4 and 32 says this. Be kind to one another. Tender hearted. Forgiving each other. Just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Then Romans 12 and 18 says this. As far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Wow. I don't know your, your story. I don't know where you grew up or when you grew up or, or, or what's gone on. I don't know if anger is an issue in your life or has been an issue in your life. I don't know if forgiveness is an issue in your life and, and you've not been able to forgive yourself. Therefore, you've never been able to forgive anyone else. But let me just ask you this. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is simply saying there's an error that took place but I have cast my vote in such a way that I'm open to restoration. I don't know why this happened. I, I don't know how we got off track. I don't know how people uh, moved into that situation or that situation. I don't understand it all. But if there's a possibility for restoration, the cross says to me that we can forgive. I can forgive you. You can forgive me because you know what? Probably, I've hurt people in my life. In fact, I, I know I have. You see, when Kathy forgives me, what she is really saying to me is this. You are more important than your hurtful action, your error, your immaturity, or your bad perception of what you did. You blew it. And I'm going to forgive you anyways. That's what forgiveness is. Even when I haven't always acted uh, appropriately, when I haven't always said the appro appropriate things, forgiveness allows me to once again come to the foot of the cross. You see, friends, relationships are way more important than any hurt that takes place, any errors that take place, any immaturity or character flaws that take place. Relationships are more important. But we need to realize that Jesus didn't just die for character flaws. He died for a person. That's you or me. And even if that person hurt me, I still need to remember that Jesus died for that person. Therefore, I offer forgiveness because Jesus has offered and given forgiveness to me. Galatians 6 and 1 says this, Brother, even if a man is caught in any trespass, you who are spirit, spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Hey, you, you see someone blowing it? Maybe, maybe you see your kids kind of messing up. But it says to us, restore them with gentleness. Maybe someone at your workplace, maybe someone on your block, maybe someone who lives next door to you has you know, you know, kind of taken some steps that are been a little harsh. But, but Scripture says... Restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness. And God says that the cross is where we receive the power to forgive one another. Because we have been forgiven. The last thing I, I just want to share here with you this morning is simply this. The cross offers to us a wholeness completeness. Uh, sometimes we, we, uh, uh, we think we're, we, we often hang our hat on the fact that God's not finished with me yet. And, and I, I believe that with all, my, with all my heart, but the cross offers us the path to completeness. John 19 and 30 says this, when Jesus therefore had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Then in Colossians 2 and 10 it says, In him, Jesus, you have been made complete. 
in Christ. Because Jesus went to the cross, we have, uh, you know, we haven't fallen short. Well, we've all fallen short, but because of the cross, we have been made complete. We have been made whole. Completion, wholeness, or salvation in Christ is not found in, in what we do or how we do it, or how holy we are. It is found in His performance and how holy He is. You see, the very last words of Jesus on the cross were, it's finished. His assignment was done and, and our sin was paid in full. Christ had won the battle uh, against our inabilities and we are made complete or whole. <clears throat> this Good Friday, we need to ask ourselves uh, if we would decide to invest in and maintain healthy relationship in this time when 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 we're distancing when we're apart when we're not working when we're not doing this when we're unsure of how the bills are going to get paid we need to make sure that those things don't crush the relationships around us because for the world to receive the good news of the gospel the good news of the cross, the good news of Jesus, the good news that they're looking for will only be found in how you and I treat one another. Our families, our friends, and the people around us. And that will determine whether they will ever believe in Jesus. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you uh, for your willingness to sacrifice your son, for your willingness to allow Jesus to carry the sins of the world to the cross. That we might be forgiven and that we might be whole. Move in our hearts today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's, uh, let's sing together and close our service with one more song. This is uh, called Once Again.
say thank you for joining us today for this Good Friday service. And uh, we just pray a blessing on you and your family this Easter weekend. Pray that you're able to reach out and connect with others. Maybe there's someone who's been on your heart uh, from Connection Point or maybe family or a friend that you haven't talked to in a while. It's just We just want to encourage you to reach out and make a connection. And uh, we just look forward to seeing you on Sunday again. Bless you and uh, have a happy Easter.